reading it or watching it, and we walk away from it feeling good, and that we've experienced something and we've learned something, then we recognize that person as a good director or a good comic book artist. If you don't understand it, or it's too complicated, or too stiff, and not enjoyable, you don't enjoy it. So whatever skills that you learn as an artist or a director, you apply to the story that you do, and there are certain basic rules to storytelling. You start with an establishing shot. You make sure you have close-ups where the people are looking at the camera. You make sure that their faces are expressing the words in the story. You make sure that the action is interesting and doesn't go off the panel. You make sure that the things that people see are the things that you, as an artist, enjoy seeing yourself. Just like a director does, just like uh, Spielberg does. He has a way of seeing on the screen what he sees in his mind. And what he sees in his mind is an interesting story. So good comic book artist, as you already know, <laughs> tells a story that you enjoy. That's really what it comes down to. So all the skills, the anatomy, the perspective, everything that you know is applied to doing the one job that you have to do, and that's to tell an interesting story. So, as a result, you can take a good written script and give it to a bad artist, and it's a crappy story. Or you can give a terrible script and give it to a terrifically good artist, and it turns out to be a pretty good story, because his ability to tell that story is that much better. What you really want is a really good story told by a really good artist. I have been lucky enough in my career to work with Denny O'Neill, Roy Thomas, some of the best uh, writers in the business, and, uh, and because of that, it's added to my reputation and allowed me to tell stories that people really, really enjoy and collect and they reprint them over and over and over again. Yeah, like the Green Lantern. Like the Green Lantern, Green Arrow series, which I think will be reprinted forever. And each time it's reprinted, the price will go up. It's about $50 now, I think. Then there's the omnibuses that sell for $100, and they weigh eight pounds. So anyway, I, I think that you'll find that the, the, the better an artist does, the more it gets reprinted, the more it becomes current. Even though it's not current, it seems current because the, the artist writes for every day, or every year, for every, uh, every epoch. Like Rembrandt writes for, for, you know, draws for everybody. Michelangelo paints for every epoch. He doesn't, it's not just locked in his time. So artists draw for the ages or try to, sometimes fail. All right, so for something lighter. <laughs> something lighter. Um, if you could have the chance to work on any character, any character whatsoever, what character would you work on and how would you portray them? I have had a chance to work on every character. If you were DC Comics or Marvel Comics and Neil came in and said, I'd like to work on Plastic Man, would you let me? Yeah, I, mean, I think Probably, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just there are certain people that you know that you that you let them do it, it, you know, for good or for bad, because you want to see how they do. The the people who work who run DC Comics and, and Marvel Comics, as stupid as they may be, <laughs> DC Comics and Warner's make lousy movies. I'm sorry. Marvel makes great movies. DC makes good animation, Marvel makes kind of uh, animation, it's just... But the, but the people at these companies are fans, just like you are. They're, they're fans. They, they would like to see Neil Adams draw Plastic Man. Wouldn't you like to see it? So, I'm just saying whenever I say anything, you know, I, I want to do more Dead Man. I want to forget, forget everything that everybody's done on Dead Man and I want to do it again. And I want to pick up what I ended 35 years ago, they say, sure, go ahead. Because they want to see it too, because they're comic book fans. So they're, they're just as geeky as you are. Jim Lee is a geeky comic book fan. I showed him, I, we were in a, in a discussion in an office room, and I had my original design for a green arrow, okay? And he had a quiver on his back. It's the only time you ever, you ever saw his quiver drawn by me. 
and it's in three sections, so it molded to his back. One, two, three, like slats of a fence, so it would bend with his back. And Jim Lee is sitting there, we're pretending we're having a business meeting, and Jim goes, oh, that's how you do it. It's three slats. I get it. He's a fan. Got it. So it's, you can't, you know, people have like serious discussions. I have, I wear ties, okay? I wear ties. It's got the bat symbol on them. I go into business meetings wearing cartoons, Tasmanian Devil on my tie. Because I don't want people to think I'm serious, because I'm not. You know, they're serious, and then they'll look and go, look at your tie and go, ah, that's Tasmanian Devil. Say, Aha, you're a cartoon, just like me. So people, this thing about, you know, adults and they don't get it, they all get it. They're all lying. My father used to steal into my room at night and he would take my comic books, go read them, and then he'd put them back. So I wouldn't know he read my comic books. Really? That's what people do. I'm just saying that it's a comic book world and it's not that serious. You know, they say, you know, science is, is uh, it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. It's easy. <laughs> Nothing to it. You just study it, you learn it, and that's the end of it. Geology, all those things are, you know, kid stuff. Especially if you learn it. And then you, you talk to a geologist and you say, I want to talk to you about geology because I've got some questions. And, they, and their eyes light up because that's the thing that they're geeky about. And they love to talk about it. And if they were comic book fans, they would talk about Batman. I got a, a, a guy who is a, 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 a rabbi, okay? And he comes to every comic book convention in the New York area and he talks about comic books. And I try to get him to talk about theory, uh, religion, about uh, the Torah. He doesn't want to talk about the Torah. He wants to talk about Batman. I'm just saying, they're geeks. And so they, they'll they let me do whatever they think is gonna be fun. They will never say, they will never say no. Why would they? You know, we're in it for fun, aren't we? We're taking over the world. Really? I mean, we got comic books in India. Our, the biggest comic book in India that I know of is Archie Comics. In Red China, they got comic books. In Russia, they got comic books. Japan, they have their own comic books, and they have American comic books. All over the world, comic books are spreading, and, it's, and they're making all the best movies anywhere out of comic books. $250, $250 million movie, it's a comic book movie. You're not going to spend the $250, move, um, uh, $250 million on To Kill a Mockingbird. It's, <laughs> you're going to spend it on Batman. I'm just saying, you don't need it for To Kill a Mockingbird. Do you? Really? Or you go to a movie and you say, oh, thank God this isn't based on a comic book. And at the end it says, based on the graphic novel by so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. It's just, we're, we're taking over the world. And so everything is possible. Everything is easy. There's no hard questions. And it's not, it's not, we are not, we are not really smart creatures. You know, I, I study a lot of science. It's not smart, it's just like comic books. I mean, if your kid is interested in really any field, as long as they attack it the way a comic book fan attacks comic books, they're gonna have a great time doing whatever it is that they love to do. And you should have a great time letting them because they're having a great time. And that's what it's about. We've come away very diligently and effectively away from the boring eight hour a day job. We've moved toward entrepreneurship. We've moved toward interesting projects. We, we look at, for that creative light in our kids' eyes almost to the prejudice of our other kids. Because you know, you get a kid who wants to draw comic books, you go, wow, I got a kid that, draws, that wants to draw comic books. And then you ignore the other three kids. But no, that's not a good idea. You gotta go to the other kids and find out what they like to do too. It's just, it's just so wonderful. I mean, you're here at a comic book convention and this is the future. Not, not just comic books, but the literature of the world. How are we gonna communicate with the Russians? How are we going to communicate with the Chinese communists? And we don't call them Chinese communists anymore. We call them Chinese. Who forgotten that, you know? And so we're all going to make peace and nobody's going to die. Right? Because nobody dies in comic books. 
If they do, they come back to life. <laughs> Just like Professor X. Just like Professor X. Yeah. He's, um, gonna come, he's due to come back to life soon. Say. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, one of your, you know why he's not back to life yet? Because... God is trying to grab his head and he keeps slipping his hands off of it because it's Paul. I made that up, I'm sorry. One of your early works is with Archie Comics or Archie Joke Books, right? Yeah. Could you share us a story about you know, your early works, early adventures with Archie 